Right, let's go into layout. You can import a drawing, a uh, SketchUp model, um, into layout, um, but we'll go through SketchUp into layout, which basically puts this drawing into layout. So, file. Now, make sure you saved the latest version of it because it needs the latest version uh, as a reference. So, then send to layout. This will open up. Layout. Now, I need, this is slightly off screen, so just don't worry about this for a second. When you choose a template, my preference is to go for an A3 landscape. Now, if you go for one of these gridded ones, firstly, um, it looks a bit weird when you put your sort of images into it, because you end up with a white background on a grid. Also, you get um, it snapping to the grid as well, which can be a bit frustrating if you're trying to move it to p different positions. Um, you can turn that off, but uh, you just avoid any problems by choosing a plain piece of paper. You can also go for um, some title block ones if you wanted, but again, you have to be kind of careful how you use those. So, A3 landscape. Open. The last view is saved, and if I move this into position, um, there you go, we can stretch it out just a little bit, and lift this up just a little bit. Right, there you go. So, what we've got, if I click on this image, I've got basically a, um, a window back into SketchUp looking at my model. Because it's referenced, I could double click inside this view and then sort of position it the way I want it. So it wouldn't necessarily stop me from panning, zooming in and out, and clicking away from that and then resizing it. Now, most of the controls that we need to look at will be on the SketchUp Model tab. Okay, so if I click away from this SketchUp model, then this thing disappears. These toolbars allow you to add text, add text with arrows, add dimensions, um, add all sorts of different shapes, and create sort of shapes as well. Okay, so the shape style is controlling these sorts of things. If I wanted a, a circle, I put that in. If I wanted to select my circle and go to the shape style and change the fill color, then I choose this and maybe choose that color, or this color, make it slightly transparent so I can do all that as well. Delete, 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 delete. We however want to be dealing with the SketchUp model for the moment. So I'll click on this, I'll look at the tab and I'll go through the tab. Um, scenes. Now modified last save SketchUp scene it tells me that the last save SketchUp scene I click back to that, it'll go to the last saved SketchUp scene. Or I can also choose scene 1, scene 2, or scene 3, which are the ones I'd set up. Um, styles, I've got the hidden line style, the style no background, and the architectural design style. So even, on, even though I'd set that view up in SketchUp, this one with style no background. I could still go to architectural style and that would drop in the background or I could just go back to that one. That will take out the background or I could choose hidden line style. Okay? So that any style that's been generated in SketchUp will be brought in with the model. Now you've got to be slightly careful because you can add more styles you can add any style you want to this. So I could go for um, a sketchy edge style and choose that style if I wanted. Now what that would do <coughs> is just adds the styles into this. If however I'd had anything special created in SketchUp, i.e. section cuts etc, these wouldn't show up on this. So any style that you want to sort of amend or edit um, that has to be amended or edited in SketchUp and then saved in SketchUp and then imported sort of back into this. The reference needs to be updated and then you'll find the style sitting in your styles, in model styles 
dialog window. Okay, I choose that. It's pretty easier to see these things and to read them. Back to the view. I want to go back to scene three. Okay, that's the scene that was saved in SketchUp. Hasn't changed in SketchUp, so this is the scene that I get to see in my drawing. Now, I want to make this slightly smaller because I want to see the plan and section as well, the plan and elevation, um, and I want to see this somewhere else. So if I drag this in to make it smaller, then it just crunches this down so I don't basically get um, a cropped view, I just get a smaller view. If I click this little button here, Preserve Scale on Resize, that means that I can just crop this to the size that I want. And that, for me, is going to be fine. I'll just move that off to there. If I wanted to shrink this, untick that, then I can kind of shrink this down a bit. Or, or double click pan and zoom in and out to reduce the size of it. Tick that back on and then position that there. Okay, so that's one thing. The next thing I want to do is to bring in another view. So I could file and um, insert or I could just copy this view because it's still linked back to SketchUp so I can click and drag that making sure I avoid if I select this, making sure I avoid that because that's just rotation and this hand means I can position the rotation point somewhere else so I could rotate it around that point so I've got to be careful not to do that, it's a good idea to actually to move it out of the way then you're free to move this by pressing the left mouse button and clicking and dragging and pressing and holding the control key, this is not where you actually tap the control key, if I tap the control key then it disappears. I'm just dragging, I'm not copying. Um, so tap the control key. I'll hold my finger on the shift key as well just to constrain that movement vertically or horizontally and let go. Alright, so that's a copy of that. Now with this view I want my scene 1 and it's already orthographic because I set that up in SketchUp using the parallel projection so that it recognizes that as orthographic and I can change the scale to 1 to 50. Okay then because I've changed the scale it's locked this out preserve scale on resize so I can now drag this and I think 1 to 50 is far too big so it must be 1 to 100. That's better. Now I can position that there drag this down take that across and that's that one done. Click and drag, control key, shift key as well. That's another one. So I can change the scene to scene two and then move that up. And just pull that down a bit. Okay, so that's the plan and a front view of this. This is like this. I think there was the profiles as well that went on to this. Um, so for me to get the profiles on, I will have to go back to the SketchUp model and pop in the profiles. So I'll just use my components. I'll make sure I've gone back to the steel frame and I can just click and drag one, two, three into the drawing. I can zoom in on these. I can set scenes for these, but what I'll do is basically just show you how to create um, an orthographic view um, outside of uh, the scenes. Okay, This is just using the basic views in layout. What we do need to do though is file, save our drawing. Okay, And then go back to layout and we now need to right click and update the reference or the best way to do it is to go into file, document setup and then in references it highlighted red because it's been updated, it's out of date so update and now it's current again okay so we can close that you can't see the other bits and pieces because they're off the drawing but if I just click and drag whoops that's all three selected select one click and drag and copy there 
then I can sort of zoom in and out to oops, find those bits of steel, there they are, there's one zoom in on that then go to ortho whoops, and then go to top and try again to find it and zoom in now I've got that size, it's ortho, I just want to change the scale to probably 1 to 10 maybe 1 to 5 actually that looks a bit better, I could probably squeeze 1 to 5 on just pull that down now the style of this can be changed I can select this and go to styles and choose hidden line or I could choose architectural design style or that one which probably shows me slightly better how this looks and with that done if I now copy this one and copy it again then just stretch this out a bit so I should be able to see the other ones there's one and pull that back in Oops there, preserve scale, every time I double click this that preserve scale on resize thing disappears so you have to make sure you recheck it and this one so recheck that there you are, preserve scale on resize move that out of the way then change the scale to 1 to 5 and standard view get there in the end. A little bit of faffing as you would expect with setting these things up. Once you've got it right it's fine. Okay. The only one we've got to fiddle with this is get the scale on this right. <coughs> 1 to 5, top view so it's in there somewhere. over here somewhere. There you go. That's that one. There is a good argument seeing me do this for making sure your scenes are set up and the views are set up properly first time round. Saves all the hassle. Okay now if you wanted to line these up um, because these are different sizes you'd have a pretty tricky job to just line them up but you could, um, you can nudge them slightly, you could also draw a line from the midpoint there vertically down <coughs> and then kind of just get them in position, that will be good enough and if there was anything else on there um, then just add it, okay? But what we're going to do next is just put some text and dimensions um, just so you see how those work and, and we can call it a day on this. Alright, so that's the next video coming up.